friends. If you want a speech, but I cannot make one at this time. I must have opportunity to think. Undue importance might be given to what I said. However, there is one thing I will do. You have a band with you. There's one piece of music I've always liked. Heretofore, it hasn't seemed the proper thing to use it in the North. But now, by virtue of my prerogative as president and uh, commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy, I declare it contraband of war and our lawful prize. I asked the band to play Dixie. <laughs> But I'm just a bubbling over with affection and ready to pour it all over uh, like apple sash over rose pork. <laughs> you have not the good manners of society, and for that reason alone, I forgive the impertinence of which you are guilty. Oh, I don't know the manners of society. It's just a minute, sir. I think I know enough to turn you inside out, old gal. You shock dodging old man trap. <laughs> myself some awfully bad names. <laughs> you know, friends, $400,000 is a big pee -pie pile of money to light a man's cigar with. <laughs> get across the Potomac, sir. We won't be safe till we're in Virginia. I can't do it. Hey, you! Inside that cabin there! Come here, boy! Yes, sir, Captain? Do you know of any doctor lives around here? Doctor? Yes, sir. I knows one, Dr. Mudd. Dr. Sam Mudd. He lives just around that bend. Can I help you, boss? Oh, no. No, get out. Get out! Come on.
lamp. Huh? There's somebody at the door. Oh, it's the stork. Looking for Aunt Roosevelt's cabin. I've been waiting for him. Well, if the stork hasn't learned his way to Aunt Roosevelt's after 11 visits, he never will learn. 11? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Look, don't you and Martha have breakfast like I get back. Yeah. I want to eat with you. And plenty of batter cakes, too, because I'm going to be hungry. And keep it turned up, too, because it's yeah. raining out. Dr. Mudd? Yes? His, his leg's broken. Can you, can you do something for him? Yes. Let's get him inside. Sorry here to have to cut your boot. I know it hurts. Oh. Hurry, please, hurry. I've got to be going. Oh, no, not on that leg. You've got a bad transverse fracture there. You, you'll be lucky if you're on that in a week. Uh, just fix it the best you can. Hurry. See, I haven't got any regular splints here, but... Take it easy, pal. Coming down from Washington? No, from uh, uh, Baltimore. Huh? I'd certainly like to have been at the White House last Sunday when, when old Abe asked the band to play Dixie. I guess old Abe's all right after all. Looks to me like he's the only salvation we Southerners can look for. Him and, and God's mercy. I never thought anybody but, but doctors had to be out at this hour of the night. His mother's dying over in Virginia. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Where's that, uh, that knife? Oh. Now I'm going to... Oh, dear, get some brandy, will you? Now I'm going to set this leg. First, I want to give you a good stiff drink of brandy. You think you can stand it? Thank you. Now, it'll only take a second or two. Now, easy now. Easy now. There. There. You know, I think it's downright foolish trying to travel on a leg like that. Look, I could put you up in a spare room. How much do I owe you? Oh, I don't know. Two, two dollars will cover it. Thank you. Oh, say, look, wait a minute. I, I want to give you a prescription. Now, this is going to help to ease that pain. It's a sedative. I want you to get it filled now as soon as you can. Thank you, Doctor. You've done me a great service. And I'm sorry if I seemed rude or abrupt. Well, things like that can't matter, Doctor. He's, his door's got to be open day and night. Good night, sir. Well, say, I do wish you'd change him. Good night. Sort of, sort of snake, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. How much? Huh? How much? Good heavens! Fifty dollars! Fifty? Oh, Sam, there must be some mistake. Shall I call him back? Or, or lock the door? Lock it, lock it, and bar it, too! Huh. And I think I called him a snake. As a matter of fact, he's probably a very kindly old philanthropist, just looking around for deserving families like us. At five o'clock in the morning. Of course. Cool. 
Well, philanthropists don't care what time it is. Say, you know what he probably thought? He probably said to himself, now, here's a pretty good couple. Of course, he don't amount to much. Just a country doctor, but, but his wife. Crazy. Huh? Poor little thing. Pretty as a picture, too. Tied up to that country pill peddler, stuck way down here in the piney woods. Probably just as unhappy as she could be, so I'll, I'll just give him $50. Oh, he thought no such thing. All right, all right. What do you think he thought? He probably said to himself, well, my goodness, here's the luckiest woman I've ever seen. She's got the sweetest child in the whole world. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. How do you know that? Philanthropists know everything. <laughs> and as for her husband, well, no matter how far out in the country he may live, he set my leg better than any New York specialist could do it. So I'll just make this his lucky day and pay him $50. Well, that's what he aimed to do, give us a lucky day. He certainly know how to start it right. Well, it was nice while we had it. She's ready for you now. She sure is ready for you now. Ah, the stork. Huh? It's here. My Sam, and Rose Bella ain't gonna have no stork, is she? Yo, come here. You're the man said his buggy was stolen last night? Yes, horse and buggy. Took it right out of my barn. Which way did the tracks go? Well, they turned off up that way. And they must have come from that way. Well, we're on the right track so far. Who lives up that road? Dr. Mudd. Samuel A. Mudd. Shall we try him? Sure, we'll try everybody. It's dead certain he got help from somebody in this neighborhood. Well, what about him? Arrest him. Take him down to Washington. Come on. I tell you, it is not a question of slavery, and never was. It is a question of states' rights. The Constitution of the United States laid down certain fundamental truths, I gather, and one of them was that the individual state had a right to secede at any time it so chose. But what happens? The, what in thunder is that? Ask just how many grits. Yeah, uh, how many grits flies all over everything. Where's your mom? She hasn't got up yet. Well, where's your pa? He's out. What? Who's sick now? At Roosevelt, I think. What? What is Roosevelt? Huh? Oh. Gee, honey. W would you mind leaving the room for a minute? Why? Because your grandpa says so. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, you now. Run along. No, shoo, shoo. Yes, yeah, shoo, shoo to you. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> well, what, 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 what about Roosevelt? Roosevelt wanted to have baby. Yeah, uh, did, uh, but, I got, how many is that? She say 12. Yeah, 12, uh, I got, what's Roosevelt trying to do, start a whole new generation by herself? Sorry, sir, but is this Dr. Mudd's home? It is. I guess. Where is Dr. Mudd? Who wants to know? Lieutenant Lovett, United States Army. I am Dr. Mudd's father-in-law. Colonel Jeremiah Milford Dyer, 4th Virginia Cavalry, Confederate States Army, sir. Yeah, uh... Well, then, maybe you'll help us, sir. We're looking for two men who passed through this part of Maryland last night. One of them was hurt. Had a bad leg. Broken, probably. Did you see or hear anything of them? If you will order that animal to keep his filthy Yankee nose out of my affairs, I may answer you. Oh, wait outside, Sergeant. In front.
Have you ever heard of John Wilkes Booth? Never. He's quite a well-known actor. Yeah, actor. I got your I leave actors to women. Rock on by You were a woman who was in the shoe. She had to make sure she didn't know what to do. So she spanked them and put them to bed. Howdy, little Johnny Reb. What do you call that? That's my dolly's carriage. Huh. It's the first time I ever saw a dolly's carriage with a spur on it. Now <laughs> look, you broke my dump. Oh, we can fix that here. Uh, I've done this lots of times. This will be easy. If I had my way, I gad, I'd line up every damn blame official of the North, sir, and have them shot. Yes, sir. Have them shot. And are these the sentiments of your son-in-law? My son-in-law, sir, is a southerner. Then with your permission, Colonel, or without it, we'll wait here for him. But... Colonel, stay here. And sit down. You colored brothers have got to realize that you're no longer slaves. You're free men. And you're as good as any white man in the state of Maryland. The right to vote is yours. And it's up to you to take it. Whoa. Don't let him think he can scare you. You're just as good as he is. You're as good as any white man. Wait a minute. Who gave you permission to come on my land and take my hands away from the work? You can't bluff me, Mud. You're a slaver. And you always have been. You're going to get off my place or you want to be thrown off. These colored men are my friends. Go on, throw them off. Get back. Keep away. Don't you dare lay your black hands on a white man. Well, Captain, you've just been telling us that we're as good as you is. <laughs> Yes, sir, my son. Get back to your cabin. Roosevelt's baby's born. Yes, sir. Well, what kind I got this time, sir? A fine-looking boy. Strong as a bull. <laughs> Come on, get it. I vow and do declare. Ha <laughs> ha, another boy. That Roosevelt sure do have a lot of children, don't you, my son? <laughs> you hear that news? <laughs> Well, whose big girl is this coming to meet her daddy, huh? It's Martha. <laughs> what, honey, you, you've been crying. Wait a minute. Who made my big girl cry? The soldier broke my dolly. See? Boy, darling, no, no. There, there aren't any soldiers around here. You ought to know that. <laughs> Peggy. Oh, Peggy. Good morning. Good morning, nothing. Don't speak to the filthy Yankee hounds. I can't come busting in a man's home here when he's eating his vittles. Dr. Mudd? Yes? Do you know John Wilkes Booth? Well, I've seen him. I... Yes, I've seen him on a stage in Washington. Would you recognize him if you saw him on the street? Well, I suppose so. Yes, yes, I believe I would. Was he here last night? Of course not. Bring Mrs. Mudd down. Here, if you harm my... Say, what's the meaning of all this? You can't even guess, I suppose, huh? Sam! What does this mean? What are they going to do? Now, will you be good enough to tell us? Certainly. Dr. Mudd is under arrest for conspiracy in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Curry! 
streets to hang these murderers of Abraham Lincoln. We'll hang them. We'll. Let's get them now. Burn the traitors. Gentlemen, Mr. Erickson, the Assistant Secretary of War. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I suppose you all realize that as members of the court martial for the trial of the conspirators in the assassination of our beloved president, you have on your souls a grave responsibility. We realize it very deeply, Mr. Secretary. The object of this trial is not to determine the guilt or innocence of a handful of rebels, but to save this country from further bloodshed. The solemn truth, gentlemen, is that the Federal Union is on the verge of hysteria. That is why the trial of these conspirators has been placed in your hands rather than in a civil court. Because men of the sword can be hard. And hardness is all that can save this country from riots, mob rule, even a resumption of the war itself. Have you any suggestions, sir? Two, to help you to be hard. First, you must not allow your judgment and decision in this case to be troubled by any trifling technicalities of the law or any pedantic regard for the customary rules of evidence. Second, and most important, you must not allow yourself to be influenced by that obnoxious creation of legal nonsense, reasonable doubt. Is that clear? Yes. yes. Briefly, the voice of this court has got to be the voice of the people. Before you start, I want you to hear that voice. Listen to it. Court is now in session. Mr. President. The Judge Advocate General. The death of John Wilkes Booth, who was shot down while resisting arrest in Virginia, has left us eight members of his criminal band. So, in the name of the government of the United States, the crime of assassination and conspiracy to assassinate Abraham Lincoln, then President of the United States, is charged against the following. David E. Hill, Louis Payne, George A. Atzeroth, Michael O'Loughlin, Edward Spangler. Samuel Arnold. Mrs. Mary E. Surratt. <laughs> and Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Mudd, I'm General Ewing. With your permission, I should like to act as your counsel. Thank you, General. Thank you. We'll fight together now, as we once fought each other. Thank you. With the permission of the court, we will begin the cases in order. 
We will start with the charge against George A. Atzeroth. But isn't there any kind of news you can give us about... about Dr. Mudd? That's all they're gonna tell, lady. Just what you see on the board. That's War Department's orders. War Department's orders. Ha! Didn't know they had one. Well, that dead bling. will now present its case against Dr. Samuel A. Martin. Tell him I've got to speak. I've got to defend myself. I, I can't let them treat me the way they've treated all these others. General Ewing, you will instruct the defendant to remain silent and respect this court. I'm confident, Mr. Erickson, that after observing the conduct of these trials, Dr. Mudd's respect for this court is every whit as great as my own. Frank J. Thomas will take the stand. Tell the court what you know of Dr. Mudd's loyalty to the Federal Union. Dr. Mudd was a died in the wool slaver. Yes, sir. Slaver. Dr. Mudd's name was on the prescription, which I failed. Dr. Mudd served in the Confederate Army. Dr. Mudd denied that he'd ever seen Booth. Dr. Mudd denied everything until I showed him Booth's own boot right in his own home. Dr. Mudd, when I examined him in prison, confessed to me that he set Booth's broken leg and then aided him with directions how to reach the Potomac and Virginia. The case is ended. No! No! The case is not ended. Here's one defense you're going to hear whether you want it or not. The prisoner will observe order. Why? Why? What more can you do to me? What threat have you got left? You can hang me. You can hang us all, the innocent as well as the guilty. Because you, you nine gallant officers and gentlemen, have stripped yourselves of your pride, your honor. But I'll not go without fight. I'll not go without trying to blacken your memories with the insane injustice. You'll carry on the souls till the day you die. And till the day you die, you ask yourselves in your heart three questions. Does an assassin confide his plans to anyone? Was I a physician? in the plot because it was part of John Wilkes Booth's plan to break his leg and, and to need me? Does a man whose first devotion is no longer to a lost cause or to any flag that flies but to his wife and his child risk any act that could only cause misery and heartbreak on their innocent lives? In the sight of the holy God I worship, I am innocent. The court will ignore the remarks of the prisoner. can't tell me what they've decided. Lady, I must have told you 40 times that I don't know any more than them bulletins. She's coming now. 
Oh, but General, isn't, isn't there any, any possible means of, of, of stopping things? Just for a little while, anyway. My child, I'm using every legal means that I know of. Oh. Be brave, my dear. We'll be back together again. Don't. Sam, don't you know? Haven't they told you? Told me what? You mean that you've heard? Sam, the verdict was guilty. Nightmare, the way you can't fight, you can't run, you can't do anything. All the time's come and taught you. Oh, but darling, we haven't given up. We're not through, mm -hmm. not yet. Okay, no, we're not giving up. You and Martha and me. But if Daddy has to stay away a little while longer, I want you to take care of Mama. You know, dry her tears, try to make her happy. Tell her, too, that in the in the bottom drawer of the roll-top desk, there are a lot of old bills, bills that, well, Daddy never got around to collecting them. Maybe they'll get enough, though, to send you to school, buy some new dresses. Try not to forget Daddy, won't you? Oh, Come on, come on. Let's go. Not giving up. Not yet, dear. Hey, bring him downstairs. My cell is here. <laughs> you ain't going to need a cell anymore. I'll see General Hunter. Oh, I know him very well. Martha. Got the best place in the yard, lady. Over yonder is where they're coming out. Courage. Courage, my dear.
looks like that's all. He's going to live. Live. Present. Yes, the show's over. What about him? Life imprisonment on Dry Tartuga. New bunch from Washington prison, sir. Hard one. Report them to the officer of the guard. Yes, sir. Bud, number six. Subordination, striking an officer, ten years. Left step. Next, Otto Lerman. Otto Lerman, desertion, twenty years. You'll never make it, Otto. You're too old. <laughs> the mosquitoes will get you. Left step. Next, Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Mudd, I've been waiting for you. So all they gave you was life. Couldn't hang you, huh? Well, by Judas, you're gonna wish the head for I'm through with you. Take a look at him, you filthy rats. Take a look at the man who killed Abe Lincoln, the greatest man who ever lived. Look at him. Watch him get what's coming to him. Next. Left step. All right, drop your chain. Hanson! Now, before we go any further here, I want you to listen to me. Because I know exactly what you're thinking. Every mother's son of you. You're figuring on whether you're going to be able to break out of here. Well, we got a little way here of putting thoughts like that out of your heads. Follow me. 
You first, Doctor. Come on, get up! Now, whenever you slops get to figuring on breaking out of here, I just want you to give a little thought to this moment. It runs all around the island. It's 75 feet wide and 35 feet deep. And you know what we keep in it? We keep pets in it. Nice little pets. We got more pets in that moat than you can count. And sometimes we feed them. Not often. Oh, no. But just for you, because I like you, I'm going to give them a little treat. Now, watch close. Prisoner, sir. Just a minute. Now you know that's quite interesting. There's a mosquito lobby. See there. But not very interesting to anyone but a medico, I'm afraid. Well, I'm also a physician, sir. No. Now I am pleased. That's Dr. Martin. I thought that, I thought that, that as another physician, you would understand the circumstances, the obligation of a doctor to, to give aid to anyone, whoever he might be. Mr. Mudd, if you assumed you might find sympathy here, get rid of the idea. The profession you have dishonored is ashamed of you, ashamed of your membership in it. As a doctor, I may tell you that I despise you even beyond the rest of the world. It would be of no use for me to swear to you on the on the honor of the profession, we both respect it. I had nothing whatsoever to do with, with the death of Mr. Lincoln. It would be of no use whatever. Sorry, sir. Master Sam. Master Sam. Oh, Buck. Master Sam. I was sorry, sir. Yeah. But I was too scared this afternoon. I couldn't say nothing to you then. Oh, I knew, I knew that. Tell me, what are you doing down here? Oh, I've been here a month waiting for you, sir. Yeah, 
Yes, so you see, Miss Mudd, she told me to get on down this here man's island, so <laughs> here I uh, done got on down on it. Look, you, you give me the first hope I've had since this, since this nightmare started. Yes, sir, I guess so. But uh, here's some soap I brought you. What? Oh, yes, I guess I do need it. Yes, yeah, sir, but, but it's for the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? Yes, sir. You put it on your face and answer. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yes, sir, because there's more mosquitoes on this here man's island than I ever seen before. I know, that's why. Uh, watch it. Huh? My home, sir. Darling, General Dewey. How do you, General? This is Judge Mabin of the District Superior Court. How do you do, Judge? Uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, the judge is a Yankee, but he's on. Uh, uh, thank you, Colonel. Uh, he's going to get Sam out of jail. Oh, but Colonel, Colonel. Uh, won't you sit down? Let me take your things. Please sit down. Let me explain, General. At my request and for my own satisfaction, Judge Maven's gone over the whole record of the case, word by word. On the evidence produced, no civil court could hold Dr. Mudd for ten minutes. You have some sort of plan, Judge. The plan is uh, Mrs. Mudd's. No judge dare devise anything quite so uh, extreme. I explained to Judge Maven what happened to the writ of habeas corpus you obtained for Sam. The government simply laughed at it. But if a writ were served on him in, say, Key West, a civil municipality. It would be honored, wouldn't it? Of course. But Dr. Mudd's not in Key West. I know he isn't. Yet. What did I tell you? But great Scott, Mrs. Mudd. You surely wouldn't dare... General Ewing, I'd dare anything for my husband. And it isn't only freedom I want for him. It's exoneration, too. He's innocent. And I want them to say so to the whole world. But if we wait... Wait? Wait for what? For the government to kill my husband? That's all we've done is wait and trust and have faith. Oh, I'm so sick of waiting. I've found a way to get Sam out. Just a moment, Mrs. Mudd. Now, all I have to say is this. If Dr. Mudd should be able to deliver himself to the civil authorities in Key West, I could have a writ of habeas corpus there to be served on him. Now, under its protection, he could be brought back here. I'd reopen the case and I feel sure give him a far different trial the one he had at the court-martial. But as to how Dr. Mudd is going to be able to get to Key West, well, I think I'd rather not hear. Good luck, my dear. And remember, I won't be the only Yankee who'll be praying with you. And don't let anything disturb you. I won't. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. We'll sell, pawn, mortgage, everything. We'll get enough money. Oh. You understand what this means to me, don't you? It's all that's left of our lives, Sam's and Martha's and mine. And it's only your support, your support behind us that we're asking. You can leave the escape entirely to me, sir. Within 24 hours, I'll have 5,000 of my old brigade under my command. We'll seize a war vessel or two and blow the whole dad plane prison to ashes and deliver Sam in Key West with a guard of honor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mudd, but if you're set on such a foolhardy plan, I must withdraw from the case. But we have to do it. He's got to be free to be tried. It's the only way. Oh, don't you see? I'm sorry. The risk is too great. I got you. And if you'll take my advice, you too will abandon this mad scheme. What do you think? <laughs> I got you. We'll show these dad blame chicken-hearted Yankee lawyers. Uh, you leave it to me. I'm 
getting tired of this. Fiddling around, fiddling around. Lawyers. Lawyers are no good. Stonewall Jackson gave me that. Pure to lead on. And if I don't get $150 for that, I'll have the pleasure of splitting the heart of the swine that they are offering me. Let's open the door. That's me. I kind of fix my name up a little bit to make it sound kind of nice. Yes, tonight. But how about the moat and them shogs? I'm gonna have to try the bridge. But they got a guard on it, sir. Yeah, I know. Watch it. Master Sam, if I could go with you, yes, I can arrange to be the guard that's on the bridge. That's right. If you could arrange to be the guard on the bridge, we could both go together. Yes, sir. Now listen. Yes, sir. There's going to be a boat. If yes, I flash two lights, I'm going to have to swim out. Yes, What's outside? Just outside. start anything you might be sorry for. Doctor? Hold. Wait, feet. 
Number two, step out. What were you doing down in that cell block? Uh, says which? I saw you. Yes, sir, it won't me. As you are. Left face. Forward. Step! that boy buck on? Uh, the bridge. He swapped with another one of them. That's what I thought. Relieve him, place him under arrest, and bring him here. What's up? Mud's out. Wait! He's out, but I don't want him back alive. Do you understand? Post extra guards to the bridge. Notify all sentries. We'll see if we can give this Judas what the court martial should have given him. Tell him to shoot and shoot straight. Guard, watch that. No. Wait. Guard that magazine over there. Quick step. Soldier, you're under arrest. But I just... Give it yourself. Move. Take your post.
the sharks will. What sharks? What sharks do you think, sir? Sergeant, with that barrage on the water, you're lucky if you've got a shark left in a hundred yards of this spot. Stop firing, you fools! You want to drive those sharks away? Keep your eyes open. I, I don't see anything down here. in toward him. Reagan, man two boats. I want that man back. Alive. You understand? Yes, sir. Boat two, number one. Number two. a little more. There he is, boys. Put him in. lean down and kiss the sleeping beauty on both eyes. Smack, smack. And what you suppose? What? The sleeping beauty waked up. Mama! Where's Daddy? 
Daddy couldn't come, darling. He wanted to, but... Oh, sweet dear, darling. It doesn't mean forever. He'll come yet. He will. I promise you. Where's Grandpa? Oh, Robert's gone away. He's gone a long, long way away. Forever? Forever. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Three, maybe, maybe four days, I guess. Marcia Sam, can I have a little bit more of that water? We ain't even heard no bugle call. We ain't even seen nobody. No food. No nothing. I guess everybody just done run on off and left us. I reckon you're doing it good to holler again. No, I holler till I'm hoarse. Well, what you suppose happened? I don't know, Buck, maybe. Maybe just as you say that they have gone off and left us to die, maybe. Tell the captain of that ship I've got to have those supplies. Tell him I got a thousand hospital cases here and only one doctor. Tell the commandant again. I'm sorry, but I refuse to put in. Tell him he's a filthy yellow coward with my compliments. Tell him I've waited five bloody days for him to make up his lily livered soul to be a man and deliver me my medicine. And now if I don't see some action out there inside of five minutes, I'm going to turn a cannon on his bloody tub and blow it to kingdom come. Government ship or no government ship. That'll make you sleep a little. You're gonna be all right, son. Morning, Lark. Are you all right, sir? Just tired. Very tired. It's a hard job, son. Always a hard job when you don't know what to do. And got no one to do it with you. If it hadn't been for you and a couple of others who've stuck by me. Well, I... I don't want to catch it myself, sir. Hmm. That's something I can't promise you. Because I don't know. I don't know what causes yellow fever. I don't know how to cure it. I don't know how it spreads, where it comes from, or where it goes. I'm going to see the commandant. Doctor, he got it. Hey, soldier. Yes, sir. My compliments. My compliments to the commandant and tell him. Yes, sir. I can't come. Tell him I've got to go to my quarter. He's got it too. White boy's sick. He's got it too. Soldier. Soldier. Come here, help me. Come here, you fools. No, sir, white boss. No, sir. You swine, I tell you, you've got to help me up.
Well? He says he can't do it, sir. Says he's scared. Scared? If ever I get my hands on that muck's throat, imagine the hound loading my supplies on rafts and just shoving them toward the shore through that surf. Look at him. Scared to land him. Scared to touch him. Scared to tend him when they're sick. Holy mother, how long do they expect to live? Forever? Big pardon, sir. If the commandant pleases, there's a doctor among the prisoners. Dr. Mudd. Mudd? Yes, sir. Dr. Mudd. Come on. Doctor, I am here on a curious mission. I want your help. My help? I need it, desperately. Doctor, this island is a pest hole. It's steaming with yellow fever. The worst epidemic we've had in years. I've got 3,000 men here, soldiers and prisoners. And those that aren't dead or dying are crazy with terror. And we're all trapped here together. What's all this to me? That's what you must decide for yourself, sir. And the good Dr. McIntyre? The good Dr. McIntyre is down. Bad. You're quite right. You couldn't possibly be in a better position to tell me and my men to go straight to the devil. And no one would understand it better than I would. In your place, I'd do it myself. But in spite of that, in spite of the fact that I can promise you no reward, that I can offer you nothing but exposure to death. I want your help. Once before I was a doctor. I'm still a doctor. Thank you, Dr. Mudd. Buck. Buck, we're going up in the open. Will you give me a hand, sir, please? straw when they heard about Dr. McIntyre's dying. They all quit. They're in the mess hall now, barricaded, guards and all. We got to do something, sir. Those patients are all alone, deserted. Have I any authority, sir? You give the orders. I'll take the responsibility, doctor. All right, sir, thank you. You wait here. You come with me. Aren't you afraid? Doctor, I'm scared to death. Yes, so am I. Steady! Don't come no closer, white man. Stay where you is. Us men ain't gonna come out there for nobody. No, I'm not gonna ask you to come out. But you're gonna listen to me. I'm just gonna tell you what you're gonna get. You're gonna get hanged, all of you. You soldiers. And you mutinied. You deserted your post. You shot at your officers. Can't get away with it. And here's what they're going to do to you. They're going to take you before the judge. Take you out in the courtyard and build a scaffold. And you're going to have to build it yourselves to your own scaffold. And when you get that done, you're going to do some digging. You're going to dig your own grave. And then the law is going to hang you. They're going to put a rope around your necks. 
and they're gonna choke you. Choke you till your eyeballs pop out and your tongue swells up. You are not talk like that. No. I ain't no Yankee talking just to hear himself talk. That's a southern man, and he mean it. Yes, sir. But for those here that want to be saved, that want to live, I got a proposition. I don't want to go near them yuppie people, man. Do you want to hear it or not? Yes. All right. There's nobody going near those yellow fever men. But this orderly and me. But I need help outside. I need workers, colored boys, water boys. Boys are willing to do what I say. Any of you boys that are willing to do that? I promise to save from hanging. You sound like a nice man. I don't want to go near them yellow fever boys. The white man say you don't have to. And besides, I'd rather be beside them yellow fever boys than hang if my balls popped out. Coming out, White Boy. All right. Now look, I'm going to give all of you just one minute to make up your mind. Coming out, White Boy. That's it. Come on, all of you. Hurry up. Now. Hurry up and don't forget. I'll Come keep out. my promise. Everybody. Come on, Come on, Come on, all of you. Come on, all of you. Back, you men begin tearing out those windows. Sash and all, I want to get some air and sunlight in this hospital. Come on, double time now. Come over here, you fellas. Look, get ready to soak these blankets. Keep them wet. I want to wrap those men up till I wash some of that fever out. Hurry up now. I want those blankets on. Come on, you and I are going in. You think all this will do any good, sir? Oh, good. I don't know, but it'll make them comfortable, isn't it? over your faces. We're going to smash out these windows and get some air in this hospital. All right, tear them out. that window, sir. With those windows out, it looks like a hurricane. Let it blow, let it rain. It's cooling, isn't it? There's nothing else that'll help to blow these blasted mosquitoes away. Come on, we'll take them in the order. This one first. Feeling pretty good, Master Sam, since you done chased them mosquitoes away. The show seems a long way from Maryland. Long time. Long ago. I wonder. I wonder if Rosabelle done forgotten. Forget you after. After 12 children? It's impossible. And that Roosevelt show sure is one real woman, ain't she, Ma Sam? <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it look today? All right, I guess. What do you mean? How long do you think these supplies are going to last forever? Where's the medicine coming from two days from now? Out of the air? Steady. And how long do you think I'm going to last forever? You've got to get some sleep. You've had five days of this. You're yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Right out yonder, not a mile offshore. There's a ship full of supplies. And a half a dozen doctors, not country doctors, brought up on belly aches and babies, but real city doctors. And the whole United States government can't make that boat come help us. <laughs> you let me put you to bed. No! Sorry. I'll go to bed because, because I'm tired.
Get out! Well, come with me. What is it, sir? Come with me. I need your help. Doctor, you're sick. Of course I'm sick. I got yellow jack. I'm the doctor, but I got yellow jack. Didn't you know that doctors could ever get yelled Only doctor in the world got a thousand cases. Only doctor in the world got a thousand cases and ain't got no medicine. Won't you tell me where we're going, sir? Yes, where we're going. Get up there. Open that door. Kick it open. This morning, still all right? Looks like I'm going to live. Doctor, this is something I've prepared to send to Washington by special messenger today. Of course, I'm in no position to speak for our government, yours and mine. But because I do love the flag I serve and because I'm jealous of its honor, I'd... I'd like to read this letter to you. It's to the President of the United States. As Commandant of the military prison at Port Jefferson, Florida, I can testify that the final checking of the recent yellow fever epidemic was the direct result of extraordinary and unselfish courage and bravery and skill on the part of Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. On behalf of the personnel of the post, including officers and enlisted men, civilians and prisoners, I take this means of urging executive clemency for Dr. Mudd as a reward for heroism far above and beyond the demands of duty. I wrote that this morning. And every man in this island would be glad to sign it. I promise you. And I'd like to be the first. With your permission, Major. With Dr. Mudd's permission. Thank you, Sergeant.
Come here, darling. Darling, Daddy's coming home. And when he comes, he... He may not look like he did when, when you last saw him, but, but don't say so. Don't look at him like that, dear, just because his face may be old and sad and tired. And he may be thin and, and his hair, but don't notice it, dear. Just, just kiss him. Kiss his cheeks and his eyes and his arms and his wrists and... Thank you, Mom, Sam. Yep. Thank you. 